Hello? What the hell was that? We just heard a door. Oh, and the light came on. Oh my god! What was that? That was <laughs> trippy! Lisa Millizer was a student here at Countryside High School. Um, I believe she was supposed to graduate in 1985. Uh, she uh, unfortunately died in a car accident. Her father worked here as the, one of the coaches, the football coaches. He was also a math teacher. The AP, I think, that got him out of class uh, told him that there was a horrible accident. And you could hear him scream out in the hallway and everything. It was not fun. Jerry Shaver, who was the, uh, the drama teacher here at the time, when she died, he kept hearing her voice talk to him. Don't be afraid. I don't know. My brother and I thoroughly believe that she's the one that's here because she has made direct contact with us. Here in the auditorium, behind me is the prop cage. In fact, there's the, a plaque that they made for her. This was uh, when, you know, just say who she is just so people wouldn't forget about her. I have seen and heard things in here, shadow figures, I've seen things moved, I've heard tapping. You know when you do the shave and a haircut, I've heard someone tap on the stage, you know, two bits back to me. So there's a lot of things that to me I can't explain. So that's why, again, that's why it's called paranormal because it's above normal, it's things that are just not exactly normal. Can you turn the flashlight off if you were a student here? It's right there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mae Johnson. Yeah, I've had one, one experience. It was during Dracula, which was our straight show last year. And I was a sound tech, but I was also running the fly system. So basically, I was upstairs by the prop cage doing like the ropes to make the curtains go up and down during scene changes. And it was like on one of the last scenes and I was just sitting like with the comms on waiting for my cue and it, the temperature just dropped like really fast. And I was really confused and I was like on comms and I was like, hey guys, like did the air turn on or something? And they're like, no, I don't know anything about that. And then I felt like a little tap on my shoulder like three times. And then that was it for that, but that was kind of really scary. So I was waiting to get picked up. And I happened to look at, at one of the exit signs that were up on the balcony. And the exit sign got like significantly dimmer and then got brighter as if something had like moved right in front of it. Because the light was reflecting, on, like the red light was reflecting against a wall and that whole area just got dark and then got lighter. And then I heard weird clicking noises everywhere. So I don't know what that was. Hey Josh. So I come back up and then right as I get back to like standing up straight, just say, hey, right in my ear. So I turn around, nope, nothing's there. So I'm like, all right, that's probably one of them up top of the prop cage. So I turn around and then I catch my friend turning right back around too. And we just lock eyes as we're turning back. And he, he looks at me and he's like, you heard that too, right? I'm like, yeah, and then, oh, this is the part that always makes me laugh. He, he was just like, Josh, we gotta get this. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dr. Brandy Stark. I have been a paranormal investigator since 1997, and um, I've actually been able to study the role of ghosts in culture along with my paranormal investigations. Did you pass away off of the school campus? Each investigation tends to be a little bit different, but the overall goal is to determine whether or not a property has an entity. Can you please drop the temperature to 72? So if there is a ghost, we're there to try to create a form of mediation. Uh, if there's not a ghost, uh, then we're there to rule it out. I do think that this site is definitely worth uh, more research. 
the most active area um, for a very brief investigation during the day uh, was really the uh, the prop cage. So uh, we did have some uh, temperatures uh, that were fluctuating. I had difficulty with uh, equipment, including battery drains and the inability for my camera to focus. Um, and there was actually a, a definite uh, cold that really started to seep into that area. Uh, we did have some electromagnetic field uh, fluctuations as well on some of the meters. So um, yes, I do think that uh, there is more research that can be done here. Skeptics, we, we definitely, they keep us on our toes. They keep us um, working towards finding more and more scientific validation. So I think, um, I think skeptics are great. Uh, skeptics in this school, um, I think unless something happens to you, uh, it's okay to be skeptical. It's okay not to believe. It's totally okay. Uh, for those that don't and never will, it's okay. But for me, I feel that there is something else, whether it's part of this world, whether it's the physical world, whether it's an ethereal world, or if it's a different universe or parallel world. I just feel that there's, it's, it's too circumstance that to not have something more than us. No. We'll leave now if you turn that flashlight off. Go ahead and turn the flashlight off. Go ahead. Off, and then we'll go because we don't want to interrupt. What yeah, we, we're thankful that we got to communicate with you tonight. We really, really appreciate it and we really hope that we didn't disturb you. Go ahead. You're almost there. Go ahead. Turn it off. Okay.